Welcome to LitCast, the podcast covering GCSE literature revision and notes for WJC. These podcasts are designed to be used as an additional revision tool. There's nothing new or groundbreaking here, just revision notes in an on-the-go friendly format. Using these alone won't guarantee you an A-star, but they can help you build your confidence to apply this knowledge to your exam questions and your classwork. With that being said, let's get started. Hello and welcome back. In this episode we are going to be talking about Curly's wife, the most significant female character in Of Mice and Men. Curly's wife, like a lot of the other characters in the novella, is simply a character type and the only woman in the plot and she is defined by that role, Curly's wife or possession. George and Candy call her other names like Jailbait and Tart. She wears too much makeup and dresses like a whore with red fingernails and red shoes with ostrich feathers. Lenny's fascinated by her and can't take his eyes off her. He keeps repeating that she's pretty. George, realising Lenny's fascination, warns him to stay away from her from the first moment that they meet. All of the men, apart from Slim, are wary of Curly's wife because she is so flirtatious. They know that if they flirt back, there'll be dangerous consequences. Curly's bound to want to fight and they'll probably also lose their jobs because he has power as the boss's son. Despite the fact that the men aren't nice to her, she doesn't leave them alone. She bursts into the bunkhouse all the time. And they call her things like jailbait and rat trap. This turns out to some extent to be true because Lenny is lured to his death uh, by killing her and by her death. One of the things to really consider with Curly's wife is the fact that we hear a lot about her before we meet her. And therefore, we may, as readers, have a slightly biased or prejudiced approach to her. So in the way that we've been looking at prejudice throughout uh, this unit and looking at the idea of prejudice and how this book um, kind of embodies this idea or demonstrates this idea, um, it's worth us thinking that actually maybe us as the reader, maybe we are also prejudiced against Curly's wife because of this negative information that we have before we meet her. So we meet her with a biased view. And as we look at her throughout the novella as well, we perhaps have this biased view right up until her death, which is almost the point. We see her in a very different light after her death, And that could make us think as readers about the prejudices that we have and give us an idea of what having those attitudes is like. Curly's wife is very attractive. She wears a lot of makeup and she's proud of her hair and she uses her looks to get attention. Lenny is dazzled by her glamour and beauty. She's yet another soft thing that he wants to touch. She does also wear a lot of red. Her lips are rouged and her fingernails and shoes are red. This links her to the girl in weed with the red dress and it's a hint that Lenny will hurt Curly's wife as well. And in your lessons and in class uh, you will more than likely go through uh, the symbolism and the different connotations that the colour red could have. Stomach uses similar language to describe Curly's wife before and after her death. Her curls are like sausages, her face is rouged and her lips are parted. But after she's died, she's also pretty and simple and sweet and young. So Steinbeck's showing that her hard life made her mean, but after her death, with all that hardness gone, she's innocent again. And this contrast is really interesting and important in terms of both the structure and the character development of Curly's wife. The initial portrayal demonstrates Curly's wife to be mean and seductive, and she could be connected with Eve in the Garden of Eden. If you remember in the podcast about George, we talked about the connections with the Garden of Eden um, and Paradise Lost. She brings evil into men's lives by tempting them in a way they cannot resist. Eventually, she brings about the end of the Dreams of Eden, the little farm where George and Lenny can live off the fat of the land. Her death at Lenny's hands means the end of George and Lenny's companionship and therefore their dream. She's portrayed like the girl in Weed as a liar and a manipulator of men. And she reminds Crooks of his place and threatens to have him lynched if he doesn't show her the proper respect as the wife of the boss's son and a white woman. All of these appearances cause the reader to dislike her and see her as the downfall of the men in the story. However, remember we talked about the idea of the prejudices and the fact that we have this negative view of her all the way through the novella. Once she's died in the barn scene, or just before she's died, sorry, in the barn scene, we start to see a softer side to her and we start to uh, see her explore her dreams and become more human. Her best laid plans involved a stint in the movies with all of the benefits, money and pleasure that they would provide. 
and her beauty is such that perhaps that dream might have come true. Her dreams make her more human and vulnerable. Steinbeck reiterates this impression by portraying her innocence in death. So that idea of the innocence coming once her hard life has disappeared is really key. So she's very pretty and simple and her face sweet and young. Steinbeck seems to show through Curly's wife that even the worst of us have our humanity. Curly's wife is a very lonely person and she's the only woman on the ranch. Curly doesn't want to spend any time with her and yet doesn't like the other men talking to her. So by default, she's left in isolation. She's another good example of a character that you could link to the theme of loneliness. She wants some companionship, and when she pretends to be looking for Curly, she's really just looking for attention from anywhere. She's quite cunning, and she's aware of the power she has over Crooks and Candy, even though she's only been on the ranch for two weeks, and she's not afraid to use it. She did dream of becoming a movie star, but she never made it to Hollywood. She escaped from the control of her mother, but ended up being controlled by her husband instead. And this is what life was like for some women in the 1930s. So if you were going to talk about Curly's wife and link her to context in an essay, then link her to some of these themes that we've talked about. Loneliness, of course, again, links to the harsh world of the ranch. We've got this idea of prejudice and even us as the reader being prejudiced against Curly's wife and sexism being uh, a huge part of that. We've got the idea of her using her physical attributes to control people and using it as a form of power, which again um, could be typical of someone in her situation. And we've got again the uh, idea of people not trusting her and the fact that the only person who does trust her in the same way as the only person that doesn't see the colour of Crooks' skin is Lenny. The only person that openly trusts her and isn't wary or precautious around her is Lenny because he's not aware of the social um, kind of the, the social prejudices and the fact that you would be more um, careful around people and you would be less likely to open up because you couldn't trust people in the same way because of the nature of jobs and people moving around a lot. When talking about Curly's wife, ultimately, it's important to think of her as a representation of women in 1930s America and the attitudes that link to that. And also think about the things that other characters say, because some of them are just as important in demonstrating what she tells us about life in the 1930s um, as much as what she does herself. So that's some notes and some ideas about Curly's wife and some of the things that you could talk about in uh, your essays. Um, and also add to your notes for revision. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next one. You've been listening to LitCast, the podcast covering GCSE literature revision and notes for WJEC. This podcast is available to download from castbox.com, so if you're listening on YouTube, the link will be in the description below, where you can download these to listen offline, on your phone and on the go. Thank you for listening, and good luck with your revision.